A book unlike any other in the world, written in a language presumed to be real. However, no one can read it because this language cannot be found anywhere else in the world except in this book. Over the years, many scientists and codebreakers have tried to solve this mysterious puzzle, but so far, no one has been able to uncover its secret. The Voynich Manuscript is considered by many to be the strangest book in the world. The intriguing thing about this book is that it is written in a mysterious and unknown language. There are no clues, civilizations, or documents in the world that resemble this language. It is a unique language that has not appeared anywhere else. The original the original author or source of the book remains unknown, but the most famous owner of this book was the renowned book dealer, Wilfred Voynich. He was the first known person to possess the book with certainty and historical documentation. That is why the book was named after him, the Voynich Manuscript. Wilfred Voynich was born in 1865 in Poland. He spent many years of his youth in prison due to his revolutionary inclinations against the Russian Empire which was ruling over Poland at that time. Voynich was imprisoned in a Siberian prison, one of the harshest and cruelest prisons. It is enough to know that Siberia is one of the coldest regions in the world. However, Voynich was an intelligent person and managed to escape from prison. Despite the difficulty of traveling in Siberia due to heavy snowfall, he managed to escape and continued his journey until he reached the city of Hamburg in Germany. He stayed there for a short period and then traveled to London. In London, he pursued his revolutionary activities for a while, but eventually decided to stop. In 1895, he turned to the book trade and collecting. Over the years, his business grew and he became known as one of the world's largest book dealers, specializing particularly in rare and historical books. One of the things that helped him in this trade was his ability to speak 18 languages. Imagine his shock when he suddenly discovered a mysterious book written in a language he had never seen before. The book was found in an aristocratic library or possibly an institution associated with the church. This institution was located in Italy and in 1912, the library or institution was on the verge of bankruptcy. Its owners decided to sell some of the books they owned to save themselves. Upon hearing the news, Voynich went to them and bought a collection of rare historical books, considering them valuable. He purchased around 30 books from them. One of these books was our mysterious book, later named the Voynich Manuscript. When Voynich saw the book, he was astonished and intrigued. In his life, he had never seen anything like this language. Voynich was the first person to attempt to decipher the codes of this book, despite being a language expert, as mentioned earlier. He spoke 18 languages. However, he had no clue about the language written in the book or its content. He tried to present it to professors at universities and other language experts, but all his attempts failed. No one could decipher anything from this book or the language it was written in. Voynich continued his attempts using all means and methods to crack the code of the book until he passed away in 1930 without reaching any conclusion. After his death, they named this book the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript remains a mystery to this day, and no one has been able to understand its meaning or the language it was written in. Some people suggest that this language could be a fictional language or nonsense created by someone. The problem is that language experts have analyzed the characters and words and found consistency and stability in the writing style and word formation. From their perspective, these texts cannot be something written randomly. However, they are unable to decipher and understand their meanings. This book contains 240 pages written on animal skin pages. In addition to texts, it also contains a large number of drawings, mainly depicting herbs and plants. However, none of these plants resemble any real plants in reality. There are similarities, but no exact matches. It seems that some drawings depict galaxies, planets, the sun, the moon, and astronomical and astrobiological symbols. There are also drawings of nude women on many pages of the book but the drawings can be considered unattractive. It is clear 
that the purpose of these drawings was not to arouse or stimulate through them. We can say that the book deals with various topics, with sections talking about medicine, nature, plants, astronomy, and others. Some sections seem to describe the properties of herbs. The book is currently preserved in the Bianecker Rare Book at Manuscript Library at Yale University. Over the years, many linguists, historians, and code-breaking experts have tried to uncover the secret of this book, but no one has yet discovered the final answer. However, there are many theories about the topics the book addresses, its origin, and its author. An early proposed theory is that the book's owner, Voynich, is the one who made this book, and in fact, the book was a meticulous forgery. According to supporters of this theory, Voynich was a rare book dealer, but he was not an ordinary dealer. He was one of the world's biggest book dealers at the time. Moreover, he was an expert in languages, able to speak 18 languages. Therefore, it is possible that he had the ability to create a text resembling real languages, but bearing no meaning at the same time. In addition, this book was meticulous, it contains large pages that can be opened and folded. Moreover, all the pages of this book were made of animal skin, making the book valuable. The materials, inks, and dyes used in the drawings were of a rare and precious type. These colors remain vivid and clear, even after hundreds of years. However, these precious materials and colors were also evidence of Voynich's innocence of the forgery charge. Experts took samples of these materials, analyzed them under the microscope, and conducted their tests. They concluded that these materials date back at least to the 15th or 16th centuries, meaning it is impossible for Voynich to be the creator, as Voynich lived in the 19th and 20th centuries, that is, after that, by 300 years. After intensive research, these experts were able to identify a large number of people who owned this book before it reached Voynich. They were able to construct a timeline containing many names and characters. What we can say is that they were almost certain that this book was in their possession at some point in time. Among these characters were scientists, doctors, and even rulers and emperors. Experts believe that this book was written in the 16th or 17th century during the reign of the Roman Emperor Rudolf. They believe that this emperor was one of the first to own the book. However, the question remains, where did this emperor buy the book? There was a strong theory suggesting that he bought it from an English priest named Edward Kelly. Edward Kelly claimed that he could communicate with spirits and angels since his days in England. Edward Kelly was born in England. When he lived there, he held a job, but was fired on charges of forging official documents. It seems that one of his ears was cut off as a result of this incident which made him hide it for the rest of his life, either with hats or with his long hair. After this incident, Edward Kelly left England and started traveling to various European cities, claiming to be a scientist. When Edward Kelly learned that the Roman Emperor Rudolf, I had an interest in science and rare and strange things, he decided to try to get closer to him. This emperor employed many scientists, doctors, and others in his entourage and it seems that many of them were fraudsters and counterfeiters from the start. Edward Kelly tried to become one of them. In fact, he claimed to be a chemist and even claimed that he could turn ordinary materials into gold. It seems that he was able to deceive the emperor with his trick and his hidden skills, with the help of some people who were secretly cooperating with him. Edward Kelly succeeded in presenting a performance in front of the emperor impressing him with his abilities, which were merely tricks and sleight of hand. After that, Edward Kelly became close to the emperor, becoming one of his employees and court scientists. After that, Edward Kelly thought about how to get more money from the foolish emperor. After thinking, he decided to create a book in a strange language, claiming that it was a rare book of knowledge coming from the angels with whom he claimed to communicate. Edward Kelly used all the forging skills he had acquired since his days in England, got precious materials, and managed to create this book with the highest level of professionalism. Then he went to the emperor and offered it to him, convincing him that its value amounted to 600 coins that were used at that time. 
And to realize the price of the book now, its value today is estimated at two kilograms of gold. This was a strong piece of evidence supporting this theory. Edward Kelly was the maker of this book, and he forged everything in it. However, this theory, which was strong for a long time, was debunked after analyzing the book using carbon dating technique on its pages for a long time. They were unable to analyze the book by carbon dating technique because it requires cutting a large part of its pages for examination. And this was completely rejected because it would cause damage to the book. Therefore, they only had a microscopic analysis which indicated that the book dates back to the 15th or 16th centuries. But now, Technology has advanced and it has become possible for them to conduct carbon dating analysis without cutting a large part of the book's pages. In the end, the experts took four small samples from different pages of the book and analyzed them using this carbon dating technique, which accurately determines the date of the animal skin used to make the book's pages. In the end, they discovered that this book indeed dates back to the early 13th century. They became confident that the skin dates back to the period between 1404 and 1438. This recent discovery caused a major shakeup in theories related to this book, including Edward Kelly's theory. Edward Kelly lived in the 16th century, while the book dates back to the 13th century. There were theories that speculated about other figures like Leonardo da Vinci, who could be the author of the book. There are also other famous figures, artists, and geniuses throughout history. However, many of these theories collapsed after carbon analysis confirmed that the book indeed dates back to the 13th century. This discovery made the situation more complicated, and to this day, the origin of this book remains unknown. They have discovered many of its secrets, but they have not been able to determine its origin or the person who wrote it over the years. Many code-breaking experts have tried to decipher the book's language. We are talking about some of the most competent professionals in this field throughout history. One of them was William Friedman, who many consider the greatest code-breaking expert. In the modern age, this man led the research department in the U.S. Army, starting from 1930. He and his team were responsible for cracking the Japanese Army's code during World War II, and they managed to crack that code successfully. This achievement was one of the keys that helped America to triumph over Japan at that time. Here we are talking about one of the greatest code-breaking experts in history. This person had a great curiosity and interest in the Voynich Manuscript. Friedman assembled a team of code-breaking experts he knew and they began to work together to crack the code and understand its language. Their attempts and research on the book continued for 40 years. However, despite all their efforts, Friedman's conclusion was that deciphering this book was impossible. The reason is that this language has no real meaning. This is the conclusion that one of the greatest code-breaking scientists reached after 40 years of research and attempts. In the modern era, they tried using computers and artificial intelligence to analyze the book's text. They entered each letter into a massive database and let the computer analyze and compare the distribution patterns and word repetitions between this text and other known natural languages. The result was that many of the characters and words showed similarities in distribution patterns and repetitions with known natural languages. However, most sentence structures or word compositions in the Voynich manuscript do not match patterns of natural languages. In short, the language the book was written in appears to be a natural language, and yet it is meaningless. This is the astonishing aspect of the issue. Despite all this advanced technology, this book remains a mysterious puzzle that no one has been able to solve to this day. Will the puzzle be solved soon? Or is it truly a meticulously crafted hoax like any other hoax? It's a question that I don't think will be answered anytime soon.